Welcome back with another Star Trek the anime. Well, uh, yeah, Gary. <laughs> Welcome back with another Star Trek the animated series episode review. Today we're going to talk about the episode called The Time Trap. This is the 12th episode from the first season of the end animated series that everything started to get back to normal. The previous episode was just amazing and this one again, an original story. So they're investigating the Delta Triangle, where the ships are mysteriously disappeared before. Doesn't it sound familiar? Exactly. The thing what I thought is the Bermuda Triangle in space. Tremendous, tremendous. The Enterprise ent enters the Delta Triangle and they find themselves against a Klingon ship. And the Klingon ship was firing to the Enterprise, the Enterprise had to fire back, but then the Klingon ship mysteriously disappears. Just like that. And then two other Klingon ships appears as well, and they claimed, they asking the Enterprises like, why did you actually destroy our ship? Obviously the Enterprise didn't destroy the ship, they disappeared, so the Enterprise goes exactly the same uh, position where the Klingon ship disappeared, and guess what? The Enterprise disappeared too. So they ended up in this um, dark space, this different universe. Um, and they can see actually a lot of different ships around from different uh, races and different ships and different cultures and obviously they they even found the one Starfleet vessel with supposedly the uh, first Starfleet vessel with a warp drive on USS Bonaventure um, now I'm sort of getting the idea why the Enterprise is a bit rough to talk about in this case but I'll get back to that later. So they find the Klingon ship, the Klingon ship starts to fire into the Enterprise, but their system doesn't work. The Enterprise tries to defend himself, but it doesn't work. So obviously something something's going on in this area, in this region of space. Suddenly Kirk disappears from the bridge, and so does the Klingon captain from the Klingon ship as well. And they actually appear in a big trial uh, room, in a big room full of different species. You can see Andorian, Talarite, Phylosian, Gorn, a cat creature, an Orion slave girl. All of them as a console, the Legion console. According to their story, they've been there for a long time. They their ship trapped there, and instead of um, instead of you know fighting against each other, or, or, um, they just united under one idea. If they can't really escape from that space. They should be together and just live together. The society what the Alasian Council uh, created there is almost perfect, but Kirk and the Klingon captain don't really want to actually uh, just you know settle down and just live there. That's not in their nature, not ex especially not in Kirk's nature. So they've been calculating a lot, and actually uh, Spock comes up with an idea to join the two ship together and together break through in this time barrier. The Klingons tried it before, but they failed. Kirk and Spock transport over to the Klingon ship and they had a conversation about the you know, the whole escape plan. And the Klingons surprisingly um, really helpful with this. So the Klingons are, are... So the Klingons basically made their point and, and they agreed, okay, help out each other and we will go out and we will escape from this triangle. I'm smiling because there's something coming. So they join the two ships, but obviously the Klingons um, don't really want to um, just give up as easily. I mean, they really want to fight against the Enterprise, they really want to get the Enterprise destroyed. And they hidden a small explosive uh, in the bridge of, um, in the computer core of the Enterprise. So after when they reach uh, warp 8 in the escape plan, that go that bomb will go off and the Enterprise will blow off as well. So, very devious. After the discussion with the Klingons and, and Kirk, Spock started to behave a little bit different. He started to act like his friends, his really good friends with the Klingons. But then, later on he explains what happened is, he really wanted to... Um, get a little personal touch, like do a little mind melt, uh, because he felt something coming from the Klingons. And that was the destruction of the Enterprise. The two ships joined together, they actually made it through the time barrier and they escaped to their own reality. There was one creature in the uh, Alasian Council, she actually uh, she was actually monitoring both of the ships while they, you know, they've been talking about the escape plan. So she pointed out the Klingons hide, uh, did hide a 
explosive device in a computer core. So, so Spock and Scotty, they found this explosive device and they actually throw it out in the eject. <laughs> they throw it out from the ship. Obviously, when they escape from this um, from this triangle, uh, the Klingon ships headed back to the Klingon Empire and the Enterprise headed back to their normal course. The episode itself was really good. I really enjoyed watching it. It, it was so cool to see all the uh, different races under one flag. It's like almost like a federation. But while I was uh, smiling uh, quite a few times, because this situation reminded me to one of the Voyager episodes, The Void, when basically the Voyager ends up in a singularity and they throw into the um, throw into a space where where no stars and there's just a lot of ships and they actually not united under one flag. They they literally um, against each other. Um, this episode ba served as a base for the later Voyager episode, The Void, and it was so interesting to see um, the, the parallel between the two. So basically what Kirk done with the Klingon crew, that's what Janeway did with the other species, so they worked together to actually break through uh, from The Void, and they did in this episode and later on the, in Voyager as well. So it was really nice to see how this episode affected the Voyager episode at the, uh, later on. Uh, the one thing that I really want to go into deep depth as well is the uh, Bonaventure. Uh, Scotty referred to the ship uh, as the first warp ship uh, from the Federation, which, um, which is partly true, partly don't. If you look at the Enterprise, uh, the Enterprise was the first warp 5 vessel. Uh, although in this case they actually mentioned the Bonaventure was the first warp vessel. Now, as long as it was the Federation vessel and Warp Federation vessel, in Enterprise we don't really talk about Federation, so in one way it could be accepted. I totally accept it because we're not talking about Federation. I think as a score of this episode, 5 out of 5, again, I didn't really find anything wrong with that, apart from the Bonaventure, what um, made me think, okay, that was really the first uh, Warp Drive vessel. Who knows? Now we don't know. We have to d go deeper inside to this uh, topic to actually find out if the Bonaventure was the first uh, warp drive vessel or not. Next time. <laughs> Let me know in the comment section below if you like this episode uh, or not, if you see it or did you actually notice something else. Let me know what you thought about the episode. As always, thank you very much for watching and I hope I will see you in the next video. Live long and prosper. So first of all, obviously we had this footage from uh, pictures uh, from the beginning, you know, starting the original series Cage and merging into Next Generation, DS9, Voyager and even, even Enterprise as well. So it was so interesting to see and it was so just so heartwarming um, to come in across um, the, all those images and even images that I didn't see before so it was like whoa <laughs> I'm, I'm a Trek fan like for 20 years 20 plus years and this is the best part of Star Trek even if it's something new comes out you can see gems what you you can see things what and hear things what what you actually experienced before but then sometimes you can get some pictures or some references and it's like oh this was really there and it was really there